book about two sisters that begins in the beginning in the early 80s during communist time in Czechoslovakia and describes this relationship between the sisters during the Velvet Revolution and the radical changes in Czechoslovakia and also the post-communist period where one of the sisters embraces the changes and the other sister really dislike the new society. When you are a, she's a convinced communist and then of course a member of the losing team if you would say and try to form a new pioneer group in, in the city of Krakow not the Polish Krakow but a utopian communist, communist town built for the workers uh, this city doesn't exist in reality, but can you tell us a bit about Krakow in the book? Uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, the Krakow the, the in the book is uh, the city, is a city that does not exist in the reality in Czech Republic, but in the book uh, I had the idea I would uh, make the Communist Party in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the beginning of the 80s built a couple of these uh, model communist cities in the last, let's say, wave of power of communism. So uh, and, and these cities were named after the cities from the fellow communist countries. Uh, those days, so that's why in Krakow, uh, but it does not really matter that the city that does not exist, it's just, uh, I mean, if it was existing city for you, it wouldn't make much of a difference. Uh, well, what, what I think is interesting in the book is the perspective, because the narrator, she is uh, communist, and so she tells about the changes uh, in the Czech Republic from the different perspective. In the context of contemporary Czech literature, I think that is uh, something uh, new because before my book was published, there were uh, the books that were dealing with the topic of communism and the, and the changes were basically told from the perspective of the uh, victim uh, somehow suffering under the regime and then welcoming the changes. So that was the only basically perspective and that's the mainstreamish perspective as we know it in the Czech Republic. And, and it's also that you are the because the one who described it before were dissident writers, but you are the first generation who were, who were only 10 years old for the Velvet Revolution. So you are the first generation who did not, or not a dissident in, in such a, a describing this. Yeah, uh, it definitely, that's, that's important what you uh, said, uh, and it also plays a uh, played a role in my decision to write such a book because I was already, uh, I think, uh, well, the, the official writers, those who were official during the communist revolution, were after the revolution no more relevant. So the mainstream writers, those big Czech writers uh, in the 90s were writers that are writers basically with the dissident background or close to the dissident movement. And a um, lot, lot of them are my friends or we of course know each other and I am kind of tired and fed up with their perspective. So, um, and it was not only the perspective, but a particular, uh, particular sense of uh, sense or, or feeling I had that they felt that they knew the truth and that they uh, 
that they are somehow morally superior uh, and morally better than the other people, than, than just those who were not against the regime. And it, to me, it just started to get on my nerves and, and I wanted to show some different uh, perspective. Also, <clears throat> because my, me, myself, I'm, let's say, from a normal family who was not, who wasn't anyhow part of the uh, dissident movement. And I've always felt uh, that these people from the right dissident families was looking at me a little bit uh, from above, as if I did not have a right origin or something. So that also got on my nerves naturally. So this book is a kind of a payback uh, and uh, just just an attempt to uh, show a different perspective and so on. It, it is because this brings you sorry tell me about New York. It, it's the book has a very dark humor. And you are giving away knockouts to everyone, to the communists and to the dissidents and to the new market people uh, benefiting from the market economy. And for example, you you write about the dissident children, the family, the children of the dissident, and you have painted a new world for them. Yes, you. So uh, that that are pulling more or less the. The, the communist children and so on. How, how much of, of yourself from your time in school and so is in the book? Uh, well, I think that the, the environment, first of all, the environment of Krakow, the city that is basically uh, this modal city made out of these big social uh, buildings. Uh, that's something I know from my childhood, although I grew up in the old town. My father uh, has been living in the exactly this part of Prague that looks like that. So I was, uh, for the, the weekends I spent in such an uh, environment. And, uh, and I think that what I remember very well from the communist times is the aesthetics of, uh, of the city as, as it looked like and then the, and then the, the, the atmosphere at school and, and among kids. That's of course based on my own uh, experience, but uh, the, this, um, this moment with the dissident kids bullying the kids from the normal families. It's more like a hyperbole uh, of, uh, of my frustration that I felt that I didn't have a right origin, let's say, and, uh, and, and so on. And so that you really, that really gets a title of it's also the politicians, the communist politicians who a couple of months, months later, are new politics, politics in the new parties, and they just, they just change the color of their badges on their coats and become new leaders. Would you say that is something that you recognize from reality in Czechoslovakia? Well, uh, I realize it now, because I have not, not me, but many people realize now that the, those changes that the, the, those changes that were interpreted as a change of the regime and fundamental changes of of the society were actually very superficial and the and, and the and the core of the power somehow continued to exist and and the people who were in power still are in the power or uh, and, 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 and for example, the um, man who is now very powerful and the leader of the strongest party uh, nowadays in Czech Republic was uh, was a 
uh, secret police, confident during the communist times, and so with the, the, these these things they just uh, continue. And for in the 90s there was this will and this attempt to uh, celebrate all the time and to uh, and to not pay attention to any criticism towards what, what was going on, answering uh, whatever is going on, it's always better than the regime we had before. Uh, but I think people are not willing anymore to do it now. And my generation is uh, kind of challenging the generation of our parents who were in their 30s during the revolution, telling them like there is not really so much to celebrate and you told us that like such a great stuff happened but actually we don't see that so much anymore in the Czech Republic. So that's it. It, it is a book I mean that describes the, the most one, one of the most important times in European history is that the revolution and continues of course with the split of Czechoslovakia and Czechoslovakia and before this book, you had mostly written about other countries, about traveling in Russia and in Mongolia and so on. What was was it this story that you wanted to tell about it that made you go back to the Czech Republic, your home country, to describe it? Uh, yeah, um, the story is that uh, sixth book. I guess, and before I wrote books that either were sent into other countries, uh, Mongolia, Russia, United States, or they were very intimate and the environment was not important in the book. Uh, and I just didn't see much of stuff going on in my country, and sometimes when stuff is going on around you, you just don't see it because it's too close. Sometimes it's easier to see things from a bigger distance. So Czech Republic was for me just a boring country. I liked to escape, to travel and find colorful stories abroad. And I also got a lot of criticism for that, like you don't describe your own country and bring us or tell us a story from your own country. Uh, that's something that Czech critics uh, often uh, said. And also, uh, as for uh, international reception of my book, books, it is a little bit weird. I mean, you are not so much interested to read about Mongolia or Russia from somebody who is not from there. It's a little bit awkward. You want the author to tell you something about the local place where the, the place he knows most about. So uh, all these things kind of made me to uh, wish to write something uh, from my own country, but it took some time uh, to me to find the drama I would be excited about. And then I realized, oh, uh, that's the drama. First of all, this frustration of yours that you were, you didn't have the right origin. And that's something that was really taboo to speak about in, in my country, that there was such a perception of people. And, and, al no, no, and, and also, um, there is also other important uh, moment in the book, and that is that the communist uh, sister, she is, let's say, very, uh, um, but she's very conformist in a way, very uh, traditional, not, not a cool alternative character at all. And the sister, she's very alternative and cool and up to date and progressive. And usually you are used to these progressive characters being the, those interesting and, and good ones in the book. And, and these like 
traditional narrow-minded being the bad one. So I also switched that because the the alternative sister she she ha, she is like uh, she does not take care about uh, her kids, and while she is interested in her creativity, her uh, she is. Uh, she has just some other dark, dark spots. So that was also this kind of switch of perspective that uh, interested me. And, and last thing I wanted to say is uh, also the, 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 the character of the narrator, this communist girl. Uh, usually when you have a female character in the book, it's either partner of somebody or a lover or a mom or uh, has a sexual role as a mistress or s something like that and I didn't want to make uh, the female character like this. I wanted to make a female that would just be obsessed with her, with what's going on in her brain and her ideology and she's completely like asexual and does not have a relationship and that's not what, what is important in her world. And that's also something that you don't see very frequently in the literature, such a female character. So, yeah. And, and, and on the opposite side where you have her sister who is very much outgoing and you know, sexual character as well. But there are two strong female main characters. It's also that this main character then tired of the new society, she forms a new pioneer group uh, to, for, for the best of the citizens. She wants, she wants, since the citizens of Czech Republic don't know their own good, she has to teach them and form a pioneer group with the help of Vietnamese immigrants. And on the other hand, the sister who has her lives in the alternative punk quarters they join together with the, the Romanis. And there you bring in two of the, big, the two big minority groups in Czech Republic as well. Uh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I just work there with the fact that um, I just work, I, I like to work with the cliches in, in my books and, and somehow challenge the cliches and and ask questions through this uh, challenging and, and we have a significant uh, Roma minority and significant Vietnamese minority but these uh, minorities are just perceived completely differently and are uh, defended by a different segments of Czech society. So while uh, Vietnamese are very popular among, let's say, normal people, uh, that they are, that they work very hard, and there are no problems with them, and they are just very uh, orderly, let's say. Um, the intellectuals and let's say alternative people they adore gypsies because like Vietnamese for them are just these like boring types who, who work 24 hours a day which is terrible so just who cares about them uh, while uh, Romas are so cheerful and like music loving and partying and freedom loving so these are the stereotypes, particular parts of the society attached to the minorities and then uh, like them or dislike them. Uh, yeah, the Roma is there when you say they are characters that in the Czech literary history comes back very romanticized in women club alone. Yes, yes. Of course, the question that has to be asked, since you are making fun of and attacking almost everyone in the Czech society and especially then the one that you said has a, a, a moral idea of himself. How controversial was this book when it was published in, in Czech Republic? Uh, 
Well, I think uh, the response was kind of uh, uh, hopeless, helpless. Uh, just critics didn't know, I think, what to do with the book because it was not easy to put it into some pre-made shelf. So the biggest discussion was whether I was or wasn't communist myself, uh, which is very ridiculous and it's not a topic of the book at all. So, thank you so much for this. And, uh, yeah. It's uh, if you want to laugh a lot and uh, at the same time learn a lot about the contemporary history of Czech Republic, you should go over there and buy a copy of the book and get it signed from Pietra. Thank you for listening and give you a Pietra. Thank you for coming.